Friends, thanks for joining me. Let's go ahead and chuck up a piece of round stock in a four jaw chuck and make it turn at the same place. All right, friends, so as we've talked about before on prior videos, a four jaw chuck has four jaws that function independently of each other. Remember a three jaw chuck, when you turn one, it turns all three of them and makes all three of them grip that piece of material. Well, a four jaw chuck does not do that. So what we have to do is we have to use our indicator, our dial indicator, and we have to put that to use to figure out where we're going to be at for our stock. All right, friends, so I have this random chunk of metal here. I want to get it turned down just a little bit, maybe drill a hole in it, whatever. So the first thing I need to do is I'm going to back off my carriage, put my stock in here, and I want to get these, each of these jaws to where they're essentially in the same spot. So see how this one, there's just a little bit of room from this point to there, or this one, there's a lot of room from there. So I wanna to get to where each one looks like it's essentially in the same spot. A lot of times I'll just hold my finger and try to get them in the same spot. Where they feel flush. So those are all essentially in the same spot. Now I'm going to put my stock in and I'm going to try to turn each one, one turn. Sometimes I'll do half a turn. So now that's getting close. So now I'm probably gonna do like a quarter turn. Quarter turn, quarter turn, quarter turn, it's getting tight. Quarter turn, okay. So now it's in there, it's solid. What I need to do now is I need to bring over my dial indicator and I need to put it right here where I have a spot that's going to going to turn concentrically. It's not this part that's already been cut. I don't want to do it off of that part. So I'm going to bring this over here. First, I want to make sure I turn the mag base on so it's not going to move. It's not going to fall off on me. Then what I can do is I can set this up and turn this whichever way works best for me. Maybe I need to Move the carriage over here more. And then, if I like that, I'm gonna go ahead and move this over just a smidge. I'm gonna bring this down. I'm gonna bring this down where it's, it's at a, oop, I don't want that to move too much. Okay, so now I'm at one and 29. So I'm at 129 thousandths. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn this and I like to get a Sharpie and I like to mark on this which number 
I'm working with. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. All right, so I'm marking one, two, three, four. So now what do I need to do, what, or rather what I need to do, is I need to start at one, then three is the exact opposite. So I remember I'm at one, and this piece is pretty rusty, but that's all right. We're just gonna get it close. We're gonna get it essentially ballpark close. So I'm at 100, and 25 thousandths at number one. I'm gonna turn it over to three, and I see I'm at 82 thousandths. So we have 10, 20, 30, 40, almost 50 thousandths difference. So what I need to do is I need to have this move essentially half of that half of 50 thousandths. So I'm gonna go 25 thousandths, and if you forget which way you need to go, just push this up. So this needs to come up 25 thousandths, which means I need to loosen this one, loosen number three, and tighten number one. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that, and it's not gonna be much. Loosen it just a little bit, move it over. Tighten this, see how that moves when I'm tightening it? So I moved, I was at 25, I moved about 20, there is about 25 thousandths. Let's go check the other side. Um, 10 difference, look at that. So I am super close. So remember how when I tightened it, it moved the needle back? So I'm gonna tighten this one up. See how it moved that needle back? So what I'm doing is I'm getting it more centered. So now I'm at two thousandths. I'm gonna switch it to one. And I'm at four thousandths. So I'm within two thousandths of an inch. That's great for me. I am good with that on this piece of stock with this lathe. This lathe is not a precision lathe. It is more of a hobby lathe. It's what students learn on. So I am great with that. We're in a difference of 2,000 centered. So now I'm gonna go to two and four. So now at two, I'm at, it looks like I'm at the one, but I'm not quite at the 90. So I'm at 89 thousandths. So, and if you forget this, you can get a piece of paper and put a post-it note on here and write on that, or put a sticky note on here and write on that, number two, 89 thousandths. Turn it over to four, and I'm at 116 thousandths. So remember, as we push this up, well, if I push that up, it's gonna change it the other way, okay? So now I need to go down. So I need to tighten this one and loosen the other one. So I'm going to tighten this one and see it move there. And I'm going to loosen the number two, just a smidge so that I can tighten number four. Okay, now I'm at just a hair over three thousandths. My number one is at 3,000, or my number two. So when I spin this thing, we'll see what difference we are. We're at, we'll go to number one, and I'm at four thousandths. I'm gonna spin it, and it looks like I get to five thousandths, back to three, to zero. Oop, might've hit a piece of rust or whatnot. Zero. Okay, so I'm within five thousandths right now. And on this lathe, on this chuck, I'm okay with that. I'm actually gonna turn this down. We have a bunch of rust on this piece, so we could be hitting a whole bunch of different stuff. 
but that is how you center your stock in a four jaw chuck. You have to use a dial indicator with a mag base and you get your stock centered one jaw at a time. Hey friends, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate your view. Make sure you work hard on this stuff because the hard work you put into it will produce a good project when you're done and you've centered it right. Thanks for watching.